Hey guys, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. Today we're painting the Hammers of Sigmar Stormcast Eternals using this Larissa Shadow Stalker model. I'm really excited because the Stormcast are amongst my favourite models in the entire of Games Workshop's range. And let's not waste any more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by painting all of the armour. And the colour that we're going to be using is some thinned down Retributor armour. So we just want to load up our brush with this. And I want to pick a place to start. I'm going to start down here on the leg and we just want to start coating this Retributor armour all over the armour like this. You can also use this as a good opportunity to just colour in any of the extra gold details that there are on the model. So areas like the decorative features on the scabbard and the hilts of her weapons. And if you need help, just check out the box art for any, well, for any Stormcast Eternals that you may or may not own. So all the features are broadly the same. And with all of that Retributor armor applied, we're now going to create a roughly four parts contrast medium, two parts Gilliman flesh, and one part Agaros Dunes mix. I'm going to use this to shade all of that gold. Like this. What you can see is that that Gilliman flesh just applies that warmth that Stormcast Eternal schemes are kind of known for. The Agaros Dunes just takes a bit of that edge off, same as what the um, contrast medium does. And it just kind of presents a slightly more mid mid tone in terms of that how red it'll look. Because if we just use Gilliman Flesh straight out the pot, it comes out as a very, very, very pinky, pinky reddy gold, and we don't want it to be too. You don't want it to be too much like that, if you see what I mean. And next up with all that shading complete, what we now want to do is we want to create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Retributor Armour and Liberator Gold and thin it down with a little bit of water to create a kind of mid-tone gold. And we want to use this to basically now just kind of relayer all of the open flat panels whilst leaving all of those recesses where the shade has settled. So for example, here on the leg, just want to start coating this over this flat area, but just leaving, as you can see, where that shade has settled. Like that. Similarly along the top of the leg. Like this. Just to create that faded, you know, that kind of warm but bright gold. And next up, with that Retributor Armour and Liberator Gold mix applied, we've now got this beautiful shining armour with all that lovely nice depth that we've left after we did the shade in the original base coat. So what we're going to do is we're now going to highlight that armour and we're going to be using a one-to-one -one mix of Retributor Armour and Stormhost Silver made thin down with a little bit of water. And what we want to do now with this colour is we just want to pick out all of the sharp edges around each of these armor panels. And what it does is it just gives it that real shine, making it look super bling, as only a Stormcast should. Like this. And with that highlight applied, the gold is now finished. And as, as you can see, the gold just looks amazing so many different layers and colors and hues in there and it's just so bright and shiny you can see the way it's reflecting off my lights it just looks amazing i'm so pleased anyway what we're going to do now is we're going to paint in the soft joints of the armor the scabbard of the sword and i can't remember what the other thing was the belt and the color that we're going to be using is black templar and what we want to do is just be very careful we don't want to use loads at a time we am going to use a sort of quite a small sized brush i'm using a small layer brush we do is pick a place to start, so I'm going to start in here, 
And we're just going to apply this Black Templar very carefully to that soft joint in the armour, taking care to avoid that gold. And with that Black Templar applied, we're now going to work on all the blue details. And these include the outside of the male tabard, these peturges, I believe is what they're called. Got a bit of fluff on there. Uh, the shoulder pad and the outside of the cape. Now these are all going to be the same colour blue. And the colour that we're going to start with is Talisar blue. And what we want to do is we want to take an even amount of it on our brush, somewhere like that. And whenever we're doing these kind of areas, we want this to be a nice smooth coat of Talisar Blue. So we want to make contact with the model at the top near a recess and just pull that Talisar Blue down like this in these big, broad brush strokes like that. It looked very pale at the moment, but that's what we want because we're starting with Talisar Blue. This isn't going to be our final colour. This is just our pre-shade. So we're going to use this to give our darker colour something to cling on to. And once that Talisar blue is dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to darken it down. And the colour that we're going to use is Ultramarine's blue. And what we want to do is take a small amount of this on our brush and then just over all of that Talisar Blue, we just want to pull this Ultramarine's Blue all the way down over the top like this. Now if you can, just leave some of the edges with that Talisar Blue shining through. particularly on like the wide open bit of cloth. It doesn't really matter up on the peturges. Because we just want to get them nice and dark like that. On the cape, for example, we would want to do, we want to use this Talisar blue, not Talisar blue, this Ultramarines blue, by kind of, once again, just making contact with the model and pulling it down get this really nice little mid-tone but if you can just leave some of that Talisar blue shining through in the sharpest areas to just establish that highlight and with that ultramarines blue applied all we want to do now is now want to highlight the blue using some Fenrisian grey now don't worry if it's still a little bit too bright for your taste we are going to darken it down after this we want to get this highlight on here because when we do our final big glaze we want to kind of blend all of those colours together. So we're just adding this Fenrisian grey to the edges like this to all of that blue. I'm going to go around doing it like this. And once that Fenrisian grey is dry, what we want to do is we want to take a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Levide and blue mix. And we want to use this all over that those blue details like this. And it, what it just does is it just pulls together the Ultramarines blue, the Talisar blue, Fenrisian grey, all of it, and gives us a really nice rich cloak. Well, a nice rich blue because we're going to do it over all of the blue. Just want to go over all of these details like this, and then we'll come back. With that Levide and blue glaze applied, the blue is now finished. So what we can do is we can move on and we can paint all the white details. And the first color we're gonna use for this is Corax White. And we thin it down on our palette. And what we wanna do is we just wanna start coating this 
Corax white all over the areas we want to be white. So this includes the interior of the cape, like around here, and all the way up there. These lightning bolts at the top here, and this little device down here. Like this. So you just want to go around being really careful around all that blue and all that gold that we've painted in. And with all that Corax white applied, we're now going to take a small amount of Apothecary white and we're going to apply this over all of those white details. So up here on those lightning bolts, we just want to add the Apothecary white all over. Just being a little bit careful when we get close to that gold. We don't want to get this all over that, but if you do, you can just use your brush to pull it off a little bit. You want to get it over both sides, front and back, like this. Like that. We also want to apply this apothecary white in here to this little lightning bolt motif, icon, or whatever we're going to call that. And then on the cape itself, what we want to do is just want to go steady, we're going to make contact with the model and just pull it down in these nice big broad brush strokes like that. Just making sure we get a nice smooth finish. So you basically just want to take the white edge off of the cape, but we still want it to be quite, um, quite bright. And once that apothecary white is dry, we're then going to once again use some Corax white, but we're going to use it slightly different ways. So what we want to do is we want to use this Corax white on the cape, and what we want to do is on the like wide open flats like this, we just want to basically relayer it back up with this Corax white once again to make them nice and bright. So we get this really vibrant white coat. Like this. You just wanna, like I said, on the, on the, on the wide open flats. So like this, this area. And similarly, just following it round. And we keep going until we get to like a recess. So actually, the best place to do that is probably right here, where we go. We take this Corax white, and we just, along the flat like this, we just add this layer. Corax white like that. And then we skip over to where that apothecary white has darkened it down. And we do the other side like that. So we get this really nice shading on the cloak. In addition, what we want to do, using a slightly smaller brush than that, so we want to take some Corax white with a, with a little with a little ditty brush and on areas such as these lightning bolts we just want to highlight the sharp edges and with those white details complete we're now going to move on and we're going to paint all the silver now the color that we're going to be using for this is iron hand steel and we want to use this all over all the areas that we want to be silver so areas like the actual blades themselves on the protector spear, I think that's what it is. Uh, we want to colour in the scale mail here. And we also want to colour in any of these little rivets and also the little hammer in there. And next up, once all that iron hand steel is dry, we're going to use some Griff Charger Grey. And this is to shade all of that metal and all that silver that we've just done.
Once that Griff Charger Grey is dry, we want to take some Stormhost Silver and we now want to highlight all of these silver parts. So we just want to, very carefully on the scale mail, just start picking out all of the, the links like this. And we also want to highlight the edges of the blades. We want to highlight the edges of the hammer up here. And with that Stormhost Silver applied, we're now going to use some Volupus Pink. And this is going to be for all of the grips on both of those weapons. We've got the big spear here and we've got the little dagger there. So we take this Volupus Pink and we just start painting this all over these grips like this. And with that Volupus Pink applied to the grips of the weapons, we're now going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to use this to paint in all of these paper details. And with that skeleton horde applied, it's now time to paint in the face. And the color that we're gonna use first is Gilliam and Flesh. And what we wanna do, when we're using this Gilliam and Flesh, we don't use, wanna use loads at a time. What we wanna always do is we wanna kind of start by the top of the hair or at the base of the chin and always kind of bring it down and just keep that paint moving. So we wanna make contact by the hair and pull it down to the base of the chin. I'm just gonna keep that paint moving like this. Let's move again, just grab a little bit more around the corner here on the head, on the hair. Keep that paint moving and always moving it down towards the base of the chin like this. So we get a nice smooth coverage of this Gilliman flesh. And next up, once that Gilliman flesh is dry, we're gonna take a small amount of flayed one flesh. I'm gonna use this to pick out all of the raised areas on her face. So areas like her nose, the bridge of her, well, the bridge of her nose, sorry, her brow, her cheekbones, Any areas that you can see that can stand out. You just want to go very steady here, picking these areas out. And with that done, just before we do the eyes, we're going to use some black Templar. And this is going to be for the hair. We just want to use, be very controlled here because we've got lots of details now that we've done, so we don't want to get this black Templar all over those. We just want to be very careful as we get close to that skin or the armour. We just want to get this all over all of that hair. There we go. And with that hair coloured in, what we're now going to do is we're going to use a small amount of wraith bone. And this is to colour in the whites of her eyes. And with that wraith bone applied, we now want to use a really tiny amount of black Templar. And this is to coat in the pupils. So you just want to very steadily use this black Templar to apply a little dot of black in the middle of each of those eyes. And with those eyes done, we now want to use some administratum gray to pick out the strands of the hair. And all that's left to do is to use a small amount of Stormhouse Silver to just pick out the braid in her hair. So you've got one here. Like that, and there's one just there as well. 
And with that, our Hammers of Sigma, Larissa Shadowstalker is now finished. All that's left to do is the base. Now I recommend that you base this miniature in the same style as the rest of your army. Larissa Shadowstalker, Knight Quester of the Hammers of Sigma is now finished. And well, much like the Katachan Colonel, this was a limited edition model, but the Hammers of Sigma uh, scheme is universal across their entire range and it is so so much fun to do the gold and the blue together just create such a regal warrior king or queen type look um yeah i just really really like it if you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further like these legends on the screen you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.